A very good morning to you all. Words are everywhere, spoken, written, on phones, TVs, books, Valentine cards when smitten. Words rush fast when in a hurry, serious words to make you worry. Bubbly words when you're a happy, sharp, cutting words when one is snappy. Articulate words that will inspire, depressing words when things are dire. Words quietly thought in the silence. Angry words thrown in times of violence. Hushed words in a lullaby. Last words shared before we die. Tearful words in times of sadness. Words of praise in times of gladness. Meaningful words when we are praying. Rude words when we're disobeying. Cruel words spoken behind your back. Encouraging words that get you back on track. Hearing words of wisdom your mother spoke. Laughing at words of a funny joke. Words passed down through generations. A bouquet of language understood by nations. Words from our Bible are there to teach that wherever we are, God's love will reach. So choose your words carefully when you speak. To become more like Jesus is what we seek. Sharing words of faith and hope with each other, but most importantly, to show God's love to one another. Shall we stand as we sing that lovely hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Right, now this is where I need some help for some young people. Is there any young people in the audience who would like to come out and come and help me? Are you not? All right, well, I've got two people. This is what I need. Now, what does that say on there, Ruby? Do you see? Tongue. Tongue, well done, Lola. Tongue. Now this, I know it doesn't look much like your tongue, <laughs> but this, all right, is your tongue. All right, for just a few moments, okay. <laughs> because did you know that you can tame almost anything apart from you can't tame your tongue? Did you realize that? Do you think you can tame your tongue? Can you keep your tongue still? No. <laughs> Lola, do you think you can? You sure? Right, well, the thing is that we're all gonna have a go, all right? So you've got to get your little pinchy fingers, as we used to say in reception, that's right, and hold your tongues. Now, they won't, no, hang on a minute, I'm not going to hold mine because you can't hear what I'm saying. What I want you to do is hold your tongue, if you'd like to, with the children, and see if you can say your name. <laughs> right, hands up, if anybody was able to do that. Hands up. Did you do that? Well done. But I don't think you were holding your tongue. You've got to hold your tongue first, young man. But anyway, this is the problem that we have. Now, you can let go of your tongues now. The thing is that we can't tame our tongue. So if you'd like to come and stand round here, Ruby, and Lola, you'd like to come round here. Jamie, Leo, do you want to come out and do this for me? You can cut something for me. Could you do that? There's a person. Right. Okay, if you stand there for a moment, okay. Now what I'd like you to do, Leo, if you hold that, okay, and if you very carefully, Jamie, could cut, every time we, we say something, I'll nod to you, you cut a piece out, is that all right? But you need to cut it, you need to hold it with two hands, Leo, from this side, well done. Okay, and don't cut your brother's fingers, all right? <laughs> right, you two. This is my tongue, your tongue, their tongue, all right? And what I want you to do is think of all those times that you say something really nasty. Did, did you do something down there that you shouldn't? Would you like to whisper to me? I made a mess. You made a mess. You made a mess. Oh, dear. Can you think of other things that you do? that you get told off or that we do that are not right, things that we do that are naughty, perhaps things we say to people. Can you think of anything? Oh, you're all really good. Mums, is there anything they do that's really naughty that their tongues get in trouble for? Can you think? What about when you argue with your brother? Do you argue with your brother yet? Yes. I you do? <laughs> Give that a big squeeze then. Give that a big squeeze. That's right, a big squeeze. Lola, what about you? Who do you, who do you get fall out with? Do you, do you fall? Your sister, right, give that a big squeeze. Right, give that a big squeeze, fantastic. Right, you can cut two pieces out of that, carefully. You might have to hold it with the other hand, Jamie. Right, can you cut that, well done. Anybody else in the congregation, anybody else think of things that we say that we shouldn't do? They're not going to no. own up now, are they? No. Well, I was really naughty yesterday. Do you know what I did? It's a swear word. No, I didn't say a swear word, no. no. Thank okay. <laughs> Thank thankfully, I didn't. I got okay. cross with Daniel, my son, because the, the computer printer wouldn't work and I needed to print my service. Okay. And I went, Daniel, come on, fix it, fix it. Come on, Daniel, hurry up. He said, I'm not a computer expert. <gasps> And I did, I got cross. And then other things you do, Leo, what about you? Anything you can think of? What about, what about when you're speedway cycling around that track? If somebody gets in your way, do you get cross? You don't. Very good. What about you, Jamie? Because turn around so everybody can see you. You go to high school now, so what happens at high school? Do the teachers get on your nerves a bit? Oh, they don't. What wonderful children we have. I must be the only naughty girl here. 
Well, there's lots of things. Yesterday, I had a customer come in to yeah. where I work. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, she couldn't make up her mind what she wanted. <laughs> As I rang the total up, she said, hang on a minute, there's something else I want. I've got a long queue of people. Now, I didn't say anything to her because that would have been really rude, but I did think, oh, for goodness sake, hurry up, Mrs. I've got a long queue here. I did. So, you can cut out the other squares for me. Now, what's happened to our tongue now? Is no for it. Yeah, that's because it has said all those horrible things, hasn't it? Now, while I'm talking to Jamie and Leo, I, what I would like you to do is, can you put that toothpaste, because it's toothpaste, really. I know. Could you put it back in the tube for me, because I shall need that for later on. So there's, there's a spoon, all right, and there's, there's a, a, a very blunt knife. Try and put it, try and, you'll have to hold it as well, because I'm going over here. Just put that back in there for me. Right, Jamie, how are we doing? Fantastic. Now, do you come, come over here for a moment. That's it. The other day also, something I had happened to me is somebody told on me. At my age, they told on me, because they didn't like what I'd put on my table for sale. And do you know what they did? They went to my manager and they said, excuse me, Andrea's selling something that we don't like. I was only selling things that I thought children would like. And do you know how that made me feel? Because that lady had used her tongue to tell on me. I felt like this. Can you see that? Can you see that? How you doing? Hurry up, hurry up, because we've, we've only got a three hour service. You can't. Oh, oh, we'll just leave it for a minute, we'll come. But that's how I felt, because people had been speaking behind my back. And nobody could see that I felt like that. But inside, I felt I'd got bits missing, and I felt very sad. Now, you say you can't get that back in. Let's have a look. Well, you know, Lola, Ruby, <laughs> Jamie, Leo, do you know what the sad thing is? That when we use our tongues to do things that hurt other people, when we do things and say things that hurt God, this is what happens. We can't take them back. We can't take them, we've said them. So that's something to remember, all right? as you go through this morning and through this week, see if you can remember to try and use your tongue to say kind things, to say things lovingly to people, even if it is your brother or your sister. All right? Thank you so much for your help, and you can, if you like, go to the back, because you've got a special job to do for me, haven't you? All right, well done. But that's a lesson to us all. Things that happen when we use our tongues in a negative way. Thank you. We're going to sing Make Me a Channel of Your Peace in a moment as a prayer. But I wanted to read it to you because very often when we sing our hymns, we just sing them because we know them. But I want to share with you why this is a very special hymn for me. Just before my dad went into hospital for the last time, he called us to his bedside and he said, I want to read something that has meant a great deal to me. And he said, I'd like you to listen to the words. And so I'm going to read the words and then we're going to sing, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there is doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is despair in life, let me bring hope. 
Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in giving to all men that we receive, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now we're going to stand and sing that together, or you can stay seated if you prefer. verses 1 to 18. Not many of you should, should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we also teach, that, that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect ma man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? 
neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find all disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Amen. Our second reading this morning comes from the first letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. It's from chapter 13, sorry, verse, reading from verse 13, chapter 1. And it's a well-known passage about speaking in tongues and love. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are, no, where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know that in part, for we know in part, and we, pros pro sorry, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. We now stand as we sing the hymn, I Want to Walk with Jesus Christ.
In today's reading from James, he uses two commonplace but vivid illustrations to liken the tongue to. Now, no expense spared here. I have a horse. And he talks about the bit in the horse's mouth. And of course, when you're riding a horse, if you pull to one side, it goes one way. And if you pull to the other side, it goes the other. And so you're able to control that horse. And likewise, a boat or a ship has got a rudder which steers that boat or steers that ship on the water. But look how small these things are. This rudder is quite small. And the third example, a spark, especially in the dry weather that we've had just recently, how many fires have been started and forests destroyed by just a small spark. And so our tongues, our tongues are small. We all tried, didn't we? Some of us tried to keep those tongues under control. And when I was at home, I was trying a little bit harder and I still couldn't do it. I couldn't keep my tongue still when trying to speak. Our tongue, such a small part of our body, and yet it has such a big role to play in our lives. In Matthew 12, verse 4, it says, For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And when I read that, I thought, my goodness, sometimes my heart must be in not a very good state. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So, of course, we all speak, don't we, in a loving fashion throughout our lives. The plain fact is, of course, that we don't. I don't know about you, but sometimes I try so hard to say the right thing. But time and time again, I let myself down. And I let God down when my tongue misbehaves. And I know that I'm not alone. We are all works in progress. God knows that we're not perfect. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, for our sins, all the wrong things we've done and all the wrong things we say. But you know, with God's help through the Holy Spirit guiding us, we can make a very conscious effort to do better. When we feel tempted to gossip, because let's face it, sometimes we hear a juicy piece of information that we just love to pass on. We can't help ourselves. We spread things that we know are not true. Talking, as I said earlier to the children in their talk, talking behind people's backs, rather than to have a face-to-face -face discussion, an exchange of words if we're not happy about something. Being sharp-tongued, just, they wouldn't let me have a real one, look, but just like a sword, our tongues are sometimes so sharp that what we say to other people really cuts deep. And it cuts people down. It takes their confidence away. How many of us like to have the last word? We're terrible for that, aren't we? Yes, but, is a familiar phrase. Angry words, I spoke to you about Daniel, and I did, I got cross last night. I got cross during the service, for goodness sake, but the printer wouldn't print, I was getting frustrated, Charlotte was in Eastbourne, Daniel, um, Jim was on the road. I was getting out of my pram, as they say, and I did, I lost my temper, and I'm not proud of it, but I'll, I'll own up, I did. We make excuses, don't we? We let people down. We give hurtful remarks to others. We just give a remark and forget about it. But what we don't realise is that a lot of our hurtful remarks linger with that person. Sometimes we make an off-the-cuff remark, a joke, which perhaps the other person doesn't find funny. 
and it stays etched on their mind. I don't know if Charlotte is watching the service this morning. She was going to try and wake up and watch it. She reminded me um, the other day of something that I said when she was younger. And she did say, Mum, please tell everybody I was much younger. She had a boiled egg with soldiers. And she came running in the kitchen, Mum, Mum, I've swallowed a bit of shell. What's going to happen to me? Those of you who know me will probably go, Andrea, I said, the worst thing that could happen to you, you could turn into a chicken. <laughs> she said, but mum, how will I know if I'm going to turn into a chicken? I said, you'll have a feather grow in the palm of your hand. That's the start. She removed the egg only to reveal a chicken's feather in the palm of her hand that must have been on there when I boiled it. And removing it, left it, and, Mum, I've got a feather on the palm of my hand. She said, Mum, do you know, whenever I eat eggs now, and I eat a piece of shell, I think about that time. Thankfully, she knows that she's not going to turn into a chicken, but something that I said as an off-the-cuff remark that she has kept etched on her mind all this time. I came across a poster the other day, and I put a copy of it on the table. If you've got a mobile phone, I urge you just to photograph it. It's called Think Before You Speak. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? And if your remarks or what you're going to say isn't those things, then don't say it. I know it's easy to say from up here because we say things so quickly, don't we? But it's worth just thinking and just having a look at. God wants us to follow the example that Jesus showed us. To love one another, sharing positive words of encouragement and inspiration with each other. Words, you know, are our most powerful way of communicating. You should pay really close attention to them. You should make sure that they're sincerely said. Have you ever noticed, years ago you used to people say, hear people say, I love you. Very often these days, people shorten it and they say, love you, or love ya, if you're younger. Do you know, by simply adding the I back in, you commit to a deeper, more authentic, and more emotional offering. I love you you. How often has somebody asked how we are and carried out on talking without waiting for an answer? Or how many times has somebody said, how are you? And you've said, actually not to, and before you can say anything else, they've said, fine, fine, good, so am I. Do we always listen? How many times do words reach us without speech, on electronic devices, void of feeling and emotional attachment? And they, people shorten things, don't they, on phones? I mean, I'm terrible. You'll find if you phone me, I have to, I have to phone you back um, on, on the phone. I can't text back. I, I don't like text. And Mr. Hollingsworth will say to me, you don't like emails either, because I don't read them very often. And why is M8 mate? I couldn't understand that for ages. I wonder who this M8 was. I thought it was something like K9, you know. But perhaps we all ought to take time to make time to share our words with others more, to share our faith with others. Perhaps even invite somebody along to church. 
here at Castle Hill or one of our social events that we're hoping to get off the ground. Perhaps we ought to make more time to speak to God. When we're walking, sitting in the garden, over a cup of coffee. Do you know, God doesn't expect huge, great, long prayers all the time. Just a couple of words. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Oh, Lord, that wind in my face is wonderful. It's cooling me down. Thank you. I can guarantee that if you just say those few words, you will feel better after a quick chat or even a long chat. Perhaps we can make more time to read the words from our Bibles. Maybe we could even get Bible notes to help us understand the passages. Perhaps we could take more time to learn together that taking time to speak more lovingly with family, friends, and yes, even strangers will reap its own reward. Perhaps we can all try harder this week to tame our tongues and with the Holy Spirit's help, I reckon we can give it a good go. Amen. There has been a lot of love shared over the loss of our dear Queen. And last week we had a hymn that reflected her service, her life. And I thought it was so nice to have asked Len if we can have that again now. So if you'd like to stand to sing, on, I don't know what it's called actually, I've just called it uh, the Queen's Hymn. But perhaps if you'd like to stand and we can share that together. <laughs> And now we come to a time of prayer. Lord, such a lot of change has happened in just over a week. 
we give thanks for all the Queen has meant to so many people. Many of us have never spoken to her personally, but her love and steadfast loyalty has always been evident over our country and its people. You have been her rock and her guide throughout her life, and her example to us has shone through with you at the helm. We pray for her family, for King Charles, that you will lead and guide him as he takes the duties over. Give him the right words to say. We share in their grief and ask for your love to surround them. She was our queen, but their mum, grandmother and great-grandmother. Give them the strength as the funeral takes place on Monday to carry on as she would have wished. Amen. Father, put a guard over my mouth when I'm about to say something I should not say, whether it is a word that is untrue, a word that is negative, a word that is critical, or a word that discourages. Lord, stop the words before they come out of my mouth. Close the door of my lips and prevent the words from leaving my mouth. Father, take control of what I say. Help me think before I speak. Help me pause before I speak. Help me consider my audience before I speak. Some things are inappropriate for some to hear. Some things are inappropriate for all to hear. Some things do not need to leave my mouth. Father, guard my lips and control what I say. Father, help me guard my words when I say something. Help me make sure the words I speak are worth hearing. If they are not, let me be silent. Being quiet may be better than being foolish. Being silent may be better than being critical, judgmental or destructive. Father, sometimes there are words of encouragement that need to pass through my lips. Let them through. Sometimes there are words of hope that need to be spoken. Let me speak them. Sometimes there are words of exhortation that need to be shared. Please don't let me remain quiet during those moments. Father, there are times when someone needs to hear that I love them. Let me say those words. There are times when someone needs to hear that I appreciate them. Let me say those words. There are times when someone needs to hear something hopeful. Let me say those words. Father, there are times when I'm afraid to speak. Please remove the fear that prevents me from speaking on behalf of the weak, the oppressed and the helpless. Please remove the fear that keeps me quiet when a child is neglected, abused or ignored. Please remove the fear that prevents me from speaking when someone needs to hear of your love for them. Help me never to miss an opportunity to speak for you. Father, there are times when I need to speak and times when I need to be quiet. Give me the wisdom to know the difference and the courage to respond accordingly. Father, guard my lips. Open them when they need to be opened and allow the words that need to pass through them to pass. Close them when they need to be closed and prevent any word that might do damage to another soul from passing through. Help me guard my words, Lord, whenever I say something. Amen. And now, Lord, we bring to you our own congregation. We have a moment's silent prayer to bring those to you. Lord, for those who are in hospital, those whose frailty keeps them prisoner in their own homes, 
Those who have ill health but still battle on bravely, we bring them to you. Lord, you've heard we know all the prayers that we've said in the silence. Hear our prayers, Lord, and help us when we need to speak, to speak of you in love. Amen. Right, now before our next hymn, the children, I think, are going to come down and show us what they've been doing. Because as you know in my services, you all get a free gift. Not just me, free gift as well. So I think Shirley's going to come down. And Linda, yeah. They've been working very hard while they're... They're just getting ready. Jesus is our rock. And as we heard with the second reading, love is the most important thing, love. And Jesus wants us to show our love for each other and for other people. And you've all been doing these beautiful stones to remind you of God's love, to remind you of this service and to hopefully remind you that words need to be spoken with love because don't forget what it said in Matthew, what comes out of our mouths is reflected in what's in our hearts. So there's one each for you to take home to put on your mantelpiece in your garden wherever you'd like to do it. Well done, they look beautiful. And also you've been doing some other works, Shirley, I'll let you come and Show how much we love, the, the, the sort of words that show we love. Do you want to come and read some of them up for me? Leo, you come and just read one of the ones that you wrote, Alice. What did you say? You Gentleness. Gentleness, well done. Lola, do you want to come and, come and see which was one of the ones that you did? Mm -hmm. Happiness, well done, yes. Showing that you're happy and being happy. Do you want to come um, up, Jamie? Kindness, that's right. Okay. Ruby, do you want to come and share it so it's one of the things that you said? You did? Ah, would you like to read one of the other ones then? Come and see if you can read one of those, okay. What can you, what's one word that you can see there that you think would be good? Good. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Say nice words. And I'll tell you what I think one of yours would be. Friendship. Because you and Lola, you're like a double act at Girls' Brigade. <laughs> And here, so that's lovely. But we've also got on there inspiring words and encouraging words, thoughtful words, kind words, saying thank you and please, um, being nice, being kind to one another. Cassie, that's what you said, wasn't it? Well done. Um, and um, can I see any others? Being patient, saying patient words. I find that quite a trial sometimes. When I'm looking up, I was going to say looking after my grandchildren, but actually with my husband is actually the most, <laughs> the one I have to be most patient with, I think. Um, not just, just because he works things differently than the way I do. <laughs> um, but I think that's that sort of the sort of thing. That's that lovely. Done. Can we put that up so, so that people can see it on the way out as well? Do you want to take it back for me, Lola? Now, we, we would, actually Shirley might like to say down here as well, and Linda. And, and, uh, and there's another person who's going to come and join us because our last hymn, I was speaking to a very good friend of mine, Sandra, and I said, well, what is your favourite hymn? And she said, I love so many of them, but Shine, Jesus, Shine. So I said she could have Shine, Jesus, Shine only if she came up and helped us. We can clap. If you don't want to clap, it doesn't matter. And if you want to have a dance, you can have a dance, all right? So we're now going to sing, with Sandra's help as well, <coughs> Shine, Jesus, shine. <laughs> Oh. 
And now may we say the blessing together. May the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.